He is one of the most iconic locomotives of all time. He was the first engine to go undisputedly 100 miles per hour and has traveled all over the world. He is none other than the Flying Scotsman. The engines were all waiting at Knapford Station. The Flying Scotsman was visiting for the first time in half a century. Gordon was very excited. I wonder if I'll recognize him with all the rebuilds he's had. There he is! Look! The Flying Scotsman rumbled into the station amongst thunderous applause. Well, if it isn't my blue brother Gordon, Scotty, how wonderful to see you again. Right back up, you boy. This time I can say you've changed a lot instead of me. You look splendid. Why, thank you. It definitely should have not taken ten years, though. Welcome to Shoredor, Flying Scotsman. Hello, Sir Topham Hat. Boy, the last time I was here, it was your grandfather who said those words. Ah, is that an A4, I see? Spencer rolled his eyes. Yes, Mr. Scott. My name is Spencer. Oh, I do like A4s. They look absolutely wonderful with a streamlined boiler. It's like a train out of heaven. Spencer was very flattered. He began boasting, much to Gordon's annoyance. Meanwhile, in the back, Croven eyed the visitor with suspicion. Croven is the governor of Sodor's private engine. He was known for being very arrogant and rude to the other engines, but had changed a lot. He mainly now kept to himself, and treated Helen, the governor's coach, with much more respect and compassion. The governor of Sodor was away traveling, so Croven didn't have much to do. Oh dear, what's wrong with you? I recognize that face. It's that visiting green engine. You mean flying Scotsman? Ooh, he's very famous. More like flying sausage, and he's not as famous as me, yet he gets a huge ovation wherever he goes. He's probably all stuck up. Well, Croven, it's needless to say that you aren't as polite as most engines, but why are you jealous? You pull the train of the most important man on the island. If anyone has the right to boast, it's you. Though again, you sometimes abuse that right. I know, Helen, but I just feel like I'm taking it for granted, if you know what I mean. Oh god, it's him again. No engine really liked Groven, but he and Spencer had a very large rivalry. They were both very similar engines, they were both private engines for very important passengers, but they always argued which was more important, speed or luxury. What had started as a simple rivalry became a feud. Whenever the two passed each other, they would hurl insults. Not to be rude, but... HURRY ALONG, YOU OLD ROAD HOG! BUG OFF, YOU BIG WHITE WEDGE! The next day, Gordon, Spencer, and the Flying Scotsman were all chatting to each other when Croven passed by. Good morning, you big white seagull dropping! Goodness gracious! I believe he was referring to me, old boy, not you. Still, that is quite rude and vulgar. 
Who is that engine? That is Croven, the private engine of the Governor of Sodor. You're joking. That lout? Yes, we're in disbelief too. He's gotten better, but who, if you get him angry, he can be quite nasty. Had he and Spencer been in a real confrontation, Croven probably would have called him a big white seal sh- Alright, I get the idea. <laughs> Perhaps I can talk some sense into him whilst I'm here. What does he have against you, Spencer? It's more like a grudge against the whole island, I tell you. But in my case, we just got into this habit of boasting to each other as to who was fastest and best. Now it's grown rather... maddening. Oh, I understand. Friendly boasting is one thing, but once you get into the habit of trying to show who's better, it becomes an unpleasant rivalry. I've seen the exact thing happen with some of my Doncaster brothers. What type of engine is he? I've never seen one like him before. Is he a hybrid? Of many builds, yes. Spencer often calls him Frankenstein. Yes, indeed. Not to brag, but I am easily the better of the two. I can go at a faster rate than any steam engine. Quite extraordinary, I must say. Oh, really? I heard about an incident where you ran out of water on a hill. Am I right? I'll have you know that I had a leaky tank. No, oh, I'm sure. Look out! A Great Western approaching! I'm sorry, Gordon, and I'm too Great Western for you to handle. Not at all. Gordon's just being a scurdy cut, that's all. Ah, I see you've brought Sir Topham Hat. Hello, you three. Now then, I have some important news to tell all of you. On Saturday, you three will triple head a train to Vickerstown and back. The Duke of Boxford has agreed to this. Splendid, sir. Sir Nigel Gresley's greatest works on one train. Sounds exciting. Later that day, Duck was having a drink at a water tower. Proven waited impatiently behind. Come on, hurry up! I've got things to do! So do I. I'm almost finished. Wait your turn. Humph! Flying crackpot doesn't have to wait for dawdling tank engines. He has two tenders, and one of them is specially for water. You may have noticed. He only brought one of his tenders. He may be famous, but he knows that every engine is as useful as him. Pa! I'm different. I'm more important. When Croven finally was getting his drink, he heard the dreaded whistle again. Oh no! Careful, old bean! Don't drink too much or you might drown! I'd be more worried about what your face looks like after I shove it up your- Spencer, of course, didn't hear him. And a good thing, too. Croven seethed with anger. I'll show that hot-haired balloon boiler. Don't act all cocky. You escalate the situation even more than he does. In fact, I think it was you who started this whole row. The next day, it was Spencer's turn to have a drink. He did so at Tidmouth Station and was enjoying it very much. Then, Croven crept into the yard. Well, hello, Silver Shark. Spencer decided to say nothing. He didn't want to start another argument. You'd better hurry up and start work before your tank leaks out. Don't waste your time throwing insults, my dear Croven. You would be as slow as a snail by day's end. Snail, am I? <laughs> if I were to put my mind to it, I might actually be able to beat you. <laughs> Outrun me! <laughs> what utter tosh! <laughs> you can't even do 100, if I recall. But I'm much smarter and more clever than you. You're bound to have an accident or get into a mess of some kind. Oh, we'll see about that. Spencer had finished his drink, and he suddenly raced off like a rocket. Croven was furious. Oh, no you don't. I'm not finished with you just yet. And Croven followed after him. He went as fast as he could, but needless to say, he couldn't even come close to catching up with Spencer. But he was too puffed up to come to his senses and raced on. He was going so fast that he was rattling and shaking. He wasn't used to such high speeds. Spencer zoomed through Knapford and headed for the Little Western. 
The signalman then changed the points for the docks. Proven didn't realize this and zoomed through the station. But there was a reason the points had been changed. Henry was slowly lumbering along with a goods train on the same line. What are you doing? The signalman switched Proven onto another line, but now he was headed towards Salty. Oh, Lord! Decided to take a swim. <laughs> Even I didn't do that, and I'm named after a bird that loves to swim. <laughs> what the bloody hell were you thinking? Going 90 in a 40 mile per hour zone? Um, I'm sorry. I should think so too. If you were my engine, you would have had severe consequences. We tried to stop him, but he was being so stubborn we couldn't get the brake on, so we had to jump clear. <laughs>